Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating a surround spawning system in Unity using rotator and function. In this tutorial we will be having a center game object and a surrounder game object that it will be surrounding our center game object in the step count that we append to our behavior. So here we said that surround the center game object with 16 surrounder game objects but we can easily say that why 16 let's go with 7 and when we hit play our behavior will be flexible to easily spawn 7 surrounder game objects around our center game object. Throughout the video we will be going through this behavior. Before going into the behavior, a little bit walk through of the scene. We have a plane, just decorative purposes. We have our surrounder game object, we have our center game object. Our center game object holds the center surrounder behavior and our surrounder game object doesn't hold anything. It is a default sphere game object and we have two cameras in the scene so that you will be able to see the environment from two different points of views. This is achieved by using viewport react property of the camera. If you're interested in that, give a comment down below for a tutorial request. Otherwise, we are continuing on with this tutorial. So our behavior takes a game object that we want our center game object to be surround around and it takes it from the scene or you can make surrounder game object a prefab and reference it in the center surrounder behavior. But if you were to create the prefab be careful about the distance between the game objects. If your game object were to spawn at where the center game object is, only thing will change about its transform will be rotation. It will not be surrounding our game object. So you need to decide a distance in one of the axes x, y, and z and make your game object rotate around that axis in the code that we will be going through now. So here is our center surrounder behavior. Our behavior takes two public variables. One, the game object that we will be spawning and surrounding our center game object and the count of surrounder game object that we want to spawn around our center game object. And we have two private variables that we will be holding. One is appearate duration. This is the duration that passes when you see all the surrounding game objects appear on the screen. This duration. And we have a surrounder parent transform. Whenever we create a new game object, we will be putting them under that game object and have our scene, have our hierarchy very clean and tidy and yes transform is here so that newly created game objects will be under it is parentage and they all will be childs of this transform and at the start we create a new game object under the center game objects name as the surrounder parent and we reference it is transform in our surrounder parent transform variable and we start the surround our center game object by calling surround step animated or surround functions so surround step animate function and surround functions are the same functions. Surround function does not wait between spawning surrounded game objects. So it's an instant spawning function and this is a more animated function that uses coroutine. The code is the same for each of them. Throughout this video I will be using surround step animate so I will go through that. Here we first calculate angle step. This angle step is the value that our game object starts to rotate around center game object by centering it down. Here you see this is an angle, this is an angle, this is an angle and this is an angle and the value of this angle is angle step. Here I have a little infographic about it so that it will convey better. A circle is 3060 degrees and we want to divide this circle into smaller pie, smaller tabs by using our surround object count. If I were to want three objects in my circle area, I would need to divide the degree into three and get an angle step of 120. So each pi you see here is 120 degrees. If I were to divide it to six, my pies will be 60 degrees and again each pi will be 60 degrees. In the logic of this behavior, every game object starts as a clone of the zeroth initial original surrounder game object. And we start to rotate it by the index of the newly created game object. So if the index is 1, we rotate the initial game object by 72 degrees. But if the index is 2, our game object again will be spawned here. So we need to rotate it around the center by 2 times of my angle step, which is 144. It will be here. This was a little bit of demonstration or more simplification hopefully about the logic of this video. I hope it will be helpful to understand what goes on here. And going back to our code, first of all I want my original surrounder game object be a child of my parent transform and start creating other game objects. 
we start with index 1 because index 0 is our original surrounded game object and we continue till we reach the count of our game objects in C minus 1 because index is our start from 0. So first we instantiate a copy of the original surrounded game objects and hold it as reference in nerve surrounder object. In the nerve surrounder object we start to rotate it around the transform position of holder of this behavior. Well, you can take this value as a placeholder in a, from public transform or you can hard code the value. You can change this however you like. For this behavior, it will be the position of the owner of this behavior. And the axis is chosen as the vector 3 up. Vector 3 up corresponds to positive y axis in unity. And if I were to change it to x axis, our game object will be rotating around in this path, quickly showing you. Vector 3 left corresponds to positive x axis in unity workspace. And again, as I mentioned, it starts from there. But if you were to use that axis, you will not get any position change in our surrounded game objects because there is no difference in the z axis between our game objects. It will stay where it is but surrounders rotation will change. Again, let's see very quickly. When I hit play, my game objects will be spawned but their places are the same but you can see the rotation changes in how many degrees? In a floaty degree because we are dividing 3060 with 7 and continuing on yes now that we have our game object and we chosen our axis only thing left is rotate this game object by angle step times it is index that just we go through here index 1 rotated 1 times index 2 is rotated 2 times by angle step and when all this comes together we are setting transform of newly created surrounder game object to surrender parent transform that hold previously and we wait just a little bit so that it will be have a steppy appear and our surrounder spawning system done its job now we see surrounder game objects in front of us so one point to take into account is that here you shouldn't have an integer division because this value is an integer so this value should be a float so that your angle step will be a float if you were try to divide 3060 into a value that that does not directly create and cause a float point, you will get something not expected. So keep that in mind. After that point, this is it for this video. I hope you like this one. If there was a point not clear, please let me know in the comments down below. And for the next video, I am planning to have the newly created game objects rotate around the center game object, which, if you ask me, has a very nice effect with all the shadows and the bright side, dark side of the game object using light name. So, in the next video, we will be getting this. If you're interested, consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please give it a like and comment down below what you think about it. If there was a point not clear again, please let me know. And this is it for now. I hope to see you in the next explorations and bye bye.